Today we're going to be diving into Milam & Green's Unabridged Volume 2. This is a blend of straight bourbons coming from 56 different barrels distilled in three different states and ranging from ages of 2 to 16 years old. If you're curious to see if this whiskey is going to live up to the hype of the 2023 Master Blender of the Year, stick around and find out because this is sure to be a good one. Hello and welcome to Lacorius George. My name is George and today we're getting curious with Unabridged Volume 2 from Milam and Green. So this is a super interesting whiskey, not only in taste, but really the way that it was so artfully crafted with the ranges in age and the different states that it was distilled in. So if you're familiar with the bourbon making process or really just whiskey in general, you'll know that where a spirit is distilled as well as age can have a huge effect on what it tastes like and the end result once it gets dumped out of that barrel. The temperature and humidity level of where that barrel is stored as it's aging can really change how much that wood is interacting with the whiskey as it ages and how much it's actually going to be pulling those flavors from that wood. So with volume two, this is coming from 56 different individual barrels and is coming from three different states. So it was distilled in Tennessee, Kentucky, as well as Texas. So as you can imagine, there's quite a swing there in terms of the climate and the environment that the barrels are coming from. I want to give a quick hats off to Milam and Green for being as transparent as they are on the back label here in terms of where these barrels are all coming from. It's rather refreshing nowadays in the whiskey world. Um, some are not as transparent as this, so it's very much appreciated. So I'm doing a little research and reading up on this whiskey. The whiskey coming out of Kentucky was distilled using column stills, whereas the whiskey coming from Texas was actually distilled in the more traditional pot stills. So I think you're getting the best of both worlds with this blend. So looking at the last couple things here on the bottle, this is coming to us at 58.8% alcohol, uh, which is at cast strength. And I mentioned it before, but it's an age range of everywhere from two years all the way up to 16 years old. So having that big of an age range, it's going to be interesting to see what flavors are getting pulled from what, uh, how much of the age comes through versus how much of the youth. So what are we waiting for? Let's go ahead and dive in. Let's go ahead and just jump right in on the nose. So immediately I'm getting some cherry, some real dark cherry notes. Aside from the cherry, just some brighter fruits I think are coming forward. It's interesting because you're definitely getting some brighter fruitiness out of it. But I think I'm, I'm getting some of that older oaky smell. Getting some really light leather notes, like almost, almost a, a new leather. Not something that's been old and worn for a while. Definitely has a rich caramel smell to it too. Yeah, the oak here is light, but I think I'm still picking it up. All right, let's dive on in and give it a taste on the palate. Okay, so that palate feels really nice. It's oily, it's viscous. That cherry note is coming back through. Almost like a cherry cola, I would give it at this point. Some dark sugar, molasses maybe, brown sugar, something like that. This whiskey packs a lot of flavor. Yeah, the finish on this is really nice and long. That oily mouthfeel to it, I think just coats your mouth, leaves it sitting there, and all that flavor just sits on your tongue. So that sweetness that you had, the brown sugar, that, that deep cherryness, it kind of moves its way on the finish here to something a little bit more leathery, tobacco, Getting some spicy in there as well. I almost get a breadiness. Getting some aniseed or that black licorice flavor that's coming up. There's almost like a nuttiness on the finish here for me too. I don't know if nutty like almonds or something like that. But some sort of a nuttiness. It's really impressive. I like this a lot. There's a whole bunch of flavor going on. Overall, I really like this whiskey. I think it does a really good job of taking just a such a wide range of age and blending them all together and you're getting such complexity out of it definitely not a one-dimensional whiskey whatsoever so if you're into that one dimension kind of you know you know what you're getting uh, this is not going to be for you this is complex there's a lot of flavor to it i think this is probably something you can sit down and just kind of sip relax sit on the porch on a nice spring day something like that really kind of sit there and just kind of enjoy it oh, but i want to hear from all of you you guys fans of Milam and green have you had volume two before? What about volume one? I'd be interested to see the two of them side by side. Maybe I'll get an opportunity at some point. 
but also if you haven't had volume two you know what is your favorite bottling from these folks i think they make some quality whiskey i have i have tried a few of their others um, and they were really good as well chances are i'm probably going to pick up another bottle or two so i only have a little bit left of my glen cairn here so i'm going to go ahead and finish up all of you out there stay curious as always if i piqued your interest check out this next video and let me know if you agree with what i'm saying or if you think I've had just one too many and I need to quit for the night.